After four months of logistical preparation and dreaming, my stomach turned like the propeller on this tin can of an airplane that I had thrown myself into. I'd gained nearly 20 pounds in muscle weight and blubbery insulation. I put in 10 days of snow skill training on Washington State's Mount Rainier. I'd taken 2,500 miles of flights, put in 300 miles of hitchhiking through former Governor Palin's great state of Alaska, and I'd grown out my beard to a length that would win me great approval among mountaineers. And I was finally flying onto my mountain, the glacier of Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain in North America, also known as Denali. Denali stands as the tallest mountain in all of North America. At 20,320 feet above sea level, the summit of this mountain is the same elevation as the cruising altitude of small aircraft. Or, put another way, about 20 of Las Vegas' stratosphere towers stacked on top of one another. The gorgeous flight in was my equivalent of scuttling my ships. There was no turning back without getting back to the landing strip and paying for a flight out. Considering I didn't have the money to pay for a flight out, I was as good as Cortez burning his ships to ensure his troops' success. I was going to spend a minimum of two weeks on the mountain, but more likely around 18 to 21 days. No showers, no buildings, no cars, no place any human was meant to live. Pure bliss. While Denali is still 9,000 vertical feet shorter than Mount Everest, some people call Denali the tallest freestanding mountain in the whole world, because the actual rise of the mountain from its base to the summit is 18,000 feet. Everest, on the other hand, sits on the Tibetan Plateau, making it from base to summit only 12,000 feet. And that's how I'd like you to think of this mountain as well, as taller than Mount Everest. When the plane made the scary snow landing on the lower glacier, I was smacked with a nice dose of reality. I had this witch's brew of feelings in my belly. On one hand, I felt absolutely alive and uncontrollably excited, but it was also checked by this nagging question, what on earth did I get myself into? This is a serious, serious mountain after all. Temperatures on the mountain have been recorded as low as negative 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind chills have been recorded at negative 118 degrees Fahrenheit. On the summit, the elevation will cause the air's oxygen concentration to be about 42% of what you, watching this movie, are breathing right now. Not only that, but conditions brought on by the proximity to the North Pole will make this a very worthy notch in my mountaineering belt. Not to mention that summiting this mountain means ticking off one of the seven summits, the notorious and coveted mountaineers list of the tallest mountain on each continent. This is nighttime on the mountain, and we waited until this time, 11 o'clock, to get ready because this is when the temperatures are the coldest on the mountain. It sounds counterintuitive, I know. Why travel when it's the coldest out? The reason is because the cold temperatures freeze the snow into a harder condition so that it's actually safer to travel over the crevasses, which there would be many of. In other words, the danger of falling into giant holes in the ice was less right, at this time. Here we are at Camp Half. It's day two! Yeah, yeah! These are our fearless guides taking us up this mountain here. Denali! And uh, we got our rope set up with all our sleds. How you feeling? 100%. Dynamite, how are you? Dynamite. Excellent. And we spent the day here, pretty much got in about 4.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Came from uh, way over there, came down Heartbreak Hill, across this glacier field and right up to where we are now and we're taking off for camp one tonight so it is currently yeah what time is it you know it's uh it's 3 19 in china <laughs> so i think that's 11 
It's 11, 11 p.m. and the sun never goes down, of course. Catch you guys on the flip side. Yeah, we're recording, cool. Uh, it's 1 in, one in the morning, about 1.20. And we hike this late because this is when it's cold enough. And it's so cold that the ground here has a little bit better texture. A little bit more stable to walk on. So it prevents us from falling into crevasses like the one that we see right there. Uh, because it's all firmed up. And these are all snow bridges that we're crossing. So underneath where we're walking right now is uh, big holes in the crevasse. We're going on about two hours now, maybe an hour and a half of actually moving and hiking. And it's been kind of slow going and we're just kind of conserving our energy because we're going to hit the mountain. From up there, there's a little pass. We get in that mountain, that pass rather, and get behind those mountains and we take a sharp right where those clouds are starting to crest over the peaks there. So um, I'm pulling up the rear and this is a, just a gorgeous, gorgeous area is what we've got on this end. Just these cool, really cool um, peaks and mountains that are just gigantic. These things are climbing. I mean, that's like a 7,000 foot peak right there. It's more than a mile high. So it's just beautiful and really, really cool, amazing place. All right, it's uh, day four. Get my glove on. We're at the 94, 9500 or so camp. And this is what we got going on. We hiked for, I don't know, two, three hours to get up here. Hardy, how you feeling? Feeling awesome, apparently. <laughs> and uh, you can see that the conditions are pretty darn whited out. Uh, we are caching all our gear right now. So we carried up, you know, 40 or so, 50 or so pounds per person. And now we're going to leave it in this big hole that I'm walking down to right now. And uh, visibility, maybe. I don't know, 100, 200 feet. It's okay, it's better than it was on the Muir, better than it's been. And uh, everybody's in pretty good spirits, still feel, feeling strong. How you feel? Feeling good. It's good to hear. And here is the cache. How's it going there, John? Looking pretty good. Yeah, it is looking good. A little bit easier near this far, I take it. <laughs> yeah, this has got to be uh, some easy, easy mountain. Oh, don't say that yet. <laughs> if you guys want, let's take a look in this hole. We can probably bring the ropes down here. There's our big deep hole. That's where all our crap's going. So it's been fun. We'll see you guys later. I'm cooking like a freaking hot dog. I'm just steaming like crazy. And uh, we're on our way up right now to 11,000, hopefully, maybe just to 9.5. We'll see how the whole team is doing. But um, conditions are maybe 30 degrees, and uh, we're feeling strong in the back, that's for sure. Yeah, the back, the back is strong. That steam is unbelievable. All right, it's day five. We're in a tent right now, a little love festival tent. Oh yeah. And uh, what do you think, Artie? What was today like? Today was good. It was uh, definitely a little bit challenging, but uh, good. Felt strong. Yeah. I think uh, overall our team did really well today. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, what, like three, three and a half hours? Yeah, about three and a half hours of moving. Oh, it was just sunny, and we all stink now. We were sweating so bad. It was hot as hell. But we moved quickly. We did. We did. We pulled sleds up from uh, 7,800 to 9,600. We had a cache up here. Uh huh. So we got up here. We dug out our cache. We set up a pretty solid camp. Pitched our four tents. Took another three hours to set everything up here. It's about four o'clock, and uh, we're hoping to go eat some dinner in about hour, hour and a half. I was proud of the group today because yesterday we took like eight breaks to get to the same spot we're at when we cached, and today we took one, so it was awesome. We've got a strong group. Other groups are like fighting and yelling at each other, and one guy collapsed. 
um, and a couple people had to be sent back from a different group, so we're overall a pretty strong team on the mountain, yeah. I think. Okay, it's day five, no, day six! We're on day six, we're on a little break right now and we're doing a carry up to uh, 11,000 feet. And uh, hopefully, as you can see, as you can see anything, uh, it's completely whited out. I've got a pretty good icicle beard going on, I feel. Um, I went to uh, wipe my nose and I was like, oh my gosh, I have solids all over my face. So uh, hopefully there's not snot all over it for this video. But, feeling strong. It's about five degrees outside. I've got four layers on my pants. going this morning and uh oh yeah there's everybody up there we got going this morning it's about about 11 o'clock and now we are uh, doing our best to keep moving and get up to the cache so that's the story this is uh in my mind just as beautiful as any beach in Thailand or any amazing peak in Patagonia is the Alaska range. And we are in Denali. We hiked from way down there. So this cloud's cleared out of the way. We're up at 11,000 feet right now. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful camp. This is the 11,200 foot camp. And man, it's just amazing out here. So, we're going to take a little bit of a rest right now, cache all our stuff, and put these guys underground. We'll be ready. How do you feel? Oh, man, I'm trying to dry out. Yeah, we're soaked, aren't we? <laughs> and you, brother? My main man, my brake buddy? Muy fantastico. Muy fantastico. Y usted, como estas? Oh, muy bien, gracias. We're all feeling good. Seems like we're all feeling strong. You feeling good? You're good, man. You're on camera right now. Okay, okay good. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that last stretch was all I wanted. Yeah. It's every bit of what I wanted. <laughs> when I was about <laughs> any minute, I was going to go, hey, hey, give me a 30 second blow. Okay, here. time out, guys. Yeah. 30 seconds for the old man. <laughs> To help you understand where we are at different points in this footage, I thought it would be helpful to walk you through this map of the entire mountain. Days 1 through 5 took us from base camp where the plane landed, along the arguably most dangerous part of the mountain, dodging the crevasses, to Camp 1, or Ski Hill Camp. From there we climbed the section you just watched, to make it to 11,000 feet up Motorcycle Hill. We dropped off our gear, got a taste of the ever-increasingly thin air, and headed back down to Ski Hill Camp so that we could sleep low. After resting for the night, we'd gather the remainder of our things and head with everything and everyone back up to 11,200 feet. Here's how it all went down. Yeah, on the Denali. Beautiful. And uh, I feel really, really strong. I feel awesome, actually. So, um, yesterday, we carried up to where we're going. Today we're making that push up. The weather has given us a little bit of snow to uh, pound through on the way up. But it's nothing that um, made us too tired despite my breathing as hard as I am now. And there's everybody behind us. Hopefully that angles on them. Dynamite. And some of these snow glacier formations are just amazing. Catch you later, and uh, looking forward to more awesome uh, views at the top. Later. It was a long, wet, sweaty, whited out day. These two photos taken from the top of Motorcycle Hill represented about the halfway point of our journey and was the clearest part of the day. I won't continue that. Here we are, 11,600 feet above sea level. Of course, physiologically, that's a little bit more uh, elevation as far as it feels because of how close to the Arctic Circle it is. And the atmosphere is just not quite thick. Without anybody else, step towards the summit, I should say. We have the 14,000 foot camp. Each 
to do a hard push to the summit, which is at 20,000 some odd feet, and then get the heck off the mountain. All right, it's day eight of our Denali adventure, and yesterday we uh, came up to here, camp 11,000 feet, and built uh, this really big snow wall here to protect our tents, and that took a long time, a lot of effort. And um, so that protects our tents, and then up there you'll see the little tip of our plush. So we get our food, built a big wall around that as well. So let me give you a quick tour. This is our tent right here. We got the Solio for the iPod to charge us up. And you come down here, we got all the sharps and keep them all in one pile so they don't poke any tent or anything like that. And this has kind of been what the weather's been like all day. It's been kind of a mix of uh, cloudy and uh, opening up into sunlight. You kind of see the sun poking its head through there. And you've had uh, people trying to get up the mountain up towards there. That is not the summit. And you can see all that wind blowing off. So well, we took a rest day today because it was pretty windy. There's our fearless leader, Dave, trying to determine what the course of the next day will be. I don't know what he's doing, actually. Um, so this is Motorcycle Hill. Head up Motorcycle Hill here. We're going to swing a right and go in front of the white uh, completely snowed over peak, but in fr uh, sorry, we go behind the white peak, but in front of the uh, rocky peak that's uh, lit up by the sun right now. Pass there, and then we're going to skirt, take a left hand turn around that. And once we take that left hand turn, we'll be on Windy, uh, windy Corner. And um, then that'll take us about 13,200 foot camp. So that's tomorrow's activities, and I also wanted to show you. This awesome pee hole. This is where we take a crap, and that's like 20 feet straight down. Um, and then we bring over the toilet to make use of this thing. So uh, I won't give you guys the pleasure of using that personally, but just know that uh, that's where it's done. So here's our camp uh, 11,000 foot camp. It's pretty cool. It's our rest day. See you on day nine tomorrow when we go up to 13,000 for a cash. To say that mornings on Denali are cold is an understatement of epic proportions. Your fingers and toes are basically useless until the mountain's shadow leaves and is filled in by the semi-warm sun. Once you've had something hot to drink, you strap your sled to your pack, your pack to yourself, and yourself to someone either in front of, behind you, or both. Once you've done this, you stand around stomping your feet trying to keep warm and wait for everybody else to do the same. The process of moving is ultimately a mind game. On clear days, you're intimidated by how far you actually have to go. On days with low visibility, you're discouraged because you can never figure out how far you've actually gone or how far you have left to go. Regardless, you're on your feet for about 4 to 12 or more hours per day. This day, for example, was about an 8-hour carry up Motorcycle Hill, providing some beautiful views because of the high visibility, then we'd arrive just below Windy Corner where we drop off our cash. It's called Windy Corner because, well, take a look. And uh, we just did Motorcycle Hill and we're about to come around Windy Corner right now. So, uh, I think it was Dave just poked his foot through there. I don't know if that's a crevasse or just a little hole, but we went through a little bit and we got a little bit of a high pressure zone and some good weather. I'm guessing right now we're around 12,500. Man, it was brutal coming around the motorcycle hill. It was really, really windy. So, we don't have a chance to keep warm. We're having a good time. So, there you go. Yeah. 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 
absolutely just beautiful sun, a little bit of wind, but other than that, it's just gorgeous. Everybody's moving up. Pretty much the whole camp from 11,000 is going up to 14 today. Hey man, this is just stuck. It's absolutely amazing. These mountains, I think that's Mount Hunter or I can't remember. And this view, to see all the way down there to the ground, is absolutely incredible. We've got some really cool stuff going on right now. Every step I take, I'm just in awe of how amazing this place is up here. It's truly a beautiful, beautiful spot. We got a little peace. That's always fun. I remember tearing up at different points of this climb and not being able to tell whether it was because of the beauty of the region, the altitude getting to my brain, or simply the magic of being in the middle of a dream, something that I'd always dreamt about and read about for years. We had a strong team with us, knowledgeable guides, and for the first time it hit me, if the weather treats us right, we will probably make it to the top of this mountain. We have a very We get to the top of this guy. It should flatten out. Camp. altimeter we were at 13,500 right where a bunch of caches were and then this is the view we get just amazing uh, shot of Denali that's it right there a little bit of looks like wind or lenticular or something on top of it but we did pick up our cache so we're going with full loads now I don't know what the weight would be maybe 40 or 50 on the on the back and then another 60 or so I don't know just guessing 50 on the sled. All right, we did it. We left about 10 a.m. this morning. It's now 5 p.m. The altimeter says 14,200 feet above sea level. And there's a good reason for that because we're at camp. Yeah, yeah. We'll set up some tents, get some rest, and tomorrow, Get some more rest. <laughs> it's been a long check up, but man, this is one of the most beautiful places I think I've ever been to. Beautiful as it may be, sometimes that's not enough to keep you going. At the end of a 12 hour push and putting up with the snow, the wind, the blistering sun, and the exhaustion of hiking uphill, we were all wiped out and exhausted. On top of that, this is the first time that I got a true perspective of how gigantic this mountain actually is. What you're looking at here isn't even the summit. It's a false summit. The summit is well above this point. So the question becomes, how do you keep yourself going? Well, it's a matter of breathing. It's pretty much one breath in to a step. Breathe out. Another step. Breathe in. Breathe out. It definitely was good to get to camp and rest. In order to recover from such a long hike the day prior to this, it was time for a rest day. Rest days on Denali consist of sawing out giant blocks of ice and snow from the ground, moving them to just a few feet away in an organized fashion, and creating ice walls to protect your tent. That is a rest day. And the purpose is to make sure that the tents are not as exposed as they are in this picture. The side benefit to a rest day is to get to see some of the marvelous and amazing views. This, what you're looking at right now, is about 2 in the morning. Yes, 
two in the morning, the sun never, ever goes down. All right, it's day 12 of the Denali experience, expedition. Coldest day yet. Yeah. Clear blue sky. My toes are cold for the first day today. <laughs> John's happy about that. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Well, today we're about to carry up to the top of the fixed line, so yeah. given the weather, we're either cash at the top of the fixed line or at Washburn Thumb. We're looking to go up there, come back down, and then build a killer uh, ice wall around our posh over there. Dave, yesterday, what was the story? Give us today? the I didn't do a day 11 video journal, so this is it. Day 11 video, yeah, well, we uh, built a little wall there. <laughs> That's, big, That's bigger than a little wall. Yeah. <laughs> we just had to build a fortress. Nice. A little nervous about the six lines. Yeah, why is that? Well, we practiced them yesterday with gloves, and it was okay. If we can do that, it should be fine. With the mittens, it'll be a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Cool. We got about uh, 12 degrees, 10 degrees out right now. I know, yeah. It's pretty chilly. We <laughs> for the sun to come out, but it's being a little stubborn. And we've got these lenticular clouds forming over Fork or over here, and those stacked lenticulars there. So we will see what the weather will bring. All we gotta get the boss, man. Bill Clinton, what do you say? Let's light this shit up. <laughs> Second video of day 12. We are on a quick little break. We to the fixed line. Clear. Up there you can see jam-packed people. Luckily, this view is just amazing. We've got uh, Borger right there. Feeling strong, feeling good. Uh, it was pretty dang cold this morning, but we've all warmed up since we hiked up from camp, which is right behind John. There, you know, those little little dots. Those are all the tents from Basin Camp or the 14,200 foot camp. Day number 13, unlucky day number 13, if you will, on our Denali trip. Today, we woke up mighty early, 6 a.m., and decided to go for a long hike. Um, we went, yesterday we didn't actually um, put the cache where we wanted to, so we ended up um, putting it at the, goal, the base of the little glacier right around there is where we cached at like, uh, 15,000 something feet and then from there we get on fixed lines and we go up right to that crest right in there and when we got there it was just nuking blistering winds it's probably 60 or 70 miles an hour I looked at my um, thermometer and it was good five negative five degrees Fahrenheit so it was definitely cold 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 up there and uh, we all got sort of a, a lesson and a little spanking about what it can be like on the mountain National Park Service tent, where they give the weather reports and where the ranger hangs out. This is our home. And we basically build huge ice walls like this one right here. And once the wall is built, um, you hope your tent doesn't get blown down while you're in it. And there's lots of people from Poland, tons of Poles, a couple Germans. Um, I haven't met any Canadians up here, mostly Americans though. And now we're going over to give you guys a little real life yeah. adventure of what it's like to live at camp. Welcome to the crapper at 14,000 feet. <laughs> My roommate kindly let me borrow some of his TV <laughs> so we don't have to carry it up. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to actually show the view while, <clears throat> while you go. Yeah. It's pretty dang nice there. I was definitely pretty anxious about the uh, the fixed lines, but you know, there's nothing to really worry about. Right. I was kind of uh, really happy with the way it turned out, and uh, you know, got a real lesson of the kind of punishment that Denali can dish out if she wanted to. So tomorrow we're going to get right up to there, where we were before, and we're going to walk behind this rock line here, go another thousand, fifteen hundred or so feet up until we get to uh, right around here, and that's going to be. Uh, behind that rock is 
um, camp, well the high camp, 17,000 foot camp. And then from there, once we get a good weather window, we're going to shoot up to there. In my research for Denali, many people told me that the climbing doesn't actually begin until you get above the 14,000 foot camp, which you see off there in the distance. And I found this to be absolutely true. You've heard many people talk about the fixed lines or the head wall, and this is the most technical and physically demanding part of the entire climb. This is approximately 800 vertical feet of climbing up a 50 to 60 degree slope on fixed lines or permanent lines on the cliff. You're attached in by ascenders or jumars. These are mechanical devices that provide a single direction of motion on the rope. Moved in one way, they slide freely. Pulled in the other, they lock on the rope, allowing the climber to pull him or herself up the mountain. A mistake or a malfunction could prove fatal for many people. A climber would slide hundreds of feet down the mountain, probably hitting other climbers along the way, and eventually slip into a crevasse at the base of the climb. 100% attention is mandatory, and filming this section would be foolish. I couldn't resist. Okay, the guys would probably get mad if I had to do all the filming on this. Back there, he's doing strong. We got to the top of really. It's easy to make the subtitle say whatever you want when the wind is so loud that nobody can understand what you're saying anyway. <laughs> Just joking, Mom and Dad. <laughs> we got to the top of the head wall and continued along this phenomenal ridge line with a 2,000 foot drop on one side and a 1,000 foot drop on the other. A single slip or a misstep would send you and potentially your team hurtling off the edge of this mountain. Luckily, you have them to catch you. After making it past Washburn's thumb, we continued for about another hour and finally made it to camp. Okay, it's on. Ready to go? Yep. Hi, camp. Day 14. Two weeks of tough slogging and to finally get to within striking distance of our objective. It's There's our awesome camp. camp. It has pee holes like I've never seen before in my life. <laughs> Let's zoom in on one right there. Other spectacular views. <laughs> so the summit's that way. That's not it that we can see though, right? No, no, it's over the other side. Yeah. 
that's base camp. That's where we came from today. Basin camp, rather. And that little one right in the upper corner is our camp that we dug out where some people occupied while we left. Where did we leave to? Way up here. So we went behind that rock that's right in front of me. And then up here are the fixed lines. And cruising up, you can see the two streaks. The one on the right is the up line, the one on the left is the down line. We went up that. Once we got up that, we got onto this ridge. And from this ridge, we walked all the way across it, around this hump here, and down into camp. And this is the 17,200 foot camp. So from here, we're gonna take one rest day, then head up this, this is Denali Pass right there. Once we get to Denali Pass, we take a right and keep cruising up until the summit. That is not the summit, that's a false summit, just uh, is what we can see from here. And uh, man, this is just an absolutely stunning place. The views up the entire ridge were just phenomenal. It was super exposed, which was awesome. And the way we came in from camp was this way, right down there, and that is Windy Corner, right there. So from uh, Windy Corner, we came from the 11,000 foot camp, which is way behind that mountain. So, that's us here at 17,200 feet above sea level. Soon, we'll be on the tallest point in North America, and it's going to be awesome. I'm seriously stoked. I can't wait. <sighs> Tomorrow is a rest day. The day after, we're going to be doing what those people are doing right there. Coming down from the summit. Oh yeah! Well, we finally had an easy day. We rested and read, but that was only because yesterday was the most brutal day of the trip. <laughs> so, tomorrow, if the weather holds out like today, only one place to go, up 12 hours, and then we can start our descent back down. Two or three days and we're back to civilization, which I think pretty much everybody is waiting for. What's the first thing you're gonna do when you get back? First thing I'm to gonna do when I get back is get a pitcher of beer. <laughs> Just for you, right? <laughs> Just for me. <laughs> and get it and put cotton on. That's the that's the second thing. When the sun came out this afternoon and it warmed up and the wind died down, it not only was it comfortable, but uh, gave us high hopes that tomorrow's gonna be a big day. Are you anxious at all for tomorrow? I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm more anxious that we won't go yeah. than, than, than about going. What's been the hardest part of the trip so far? Oh, by far it was yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. Oh, too, too heavy. Packs were too heavy. The ridges were, the wind was too high. Yeah, no. Would, it, you, come, would you come back if we do so much more? Will I come back and summit here again? Come yeah. here again? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly the same. <laughs> Once is enough. <laughs> yeah, cool. While we may never return, for anyone to lay eyes on this mountain, even once, would be a real gift in their life. The friendships that can be formed, the challenges that you can face, and the inner strength that you can find in yourself is something magic. I saw this little rock sticking out on my rest day, and I thought to myself, hmm, I could do something with that rock. So of course, I walked out on it, and in all vanity, I took the coolest picture of all time on top of it. Then I got the heck off. It was time to contemplate what the day ahead of me would hold. After all, it was summit day. Our time had finally arrived. It was summit day. The weather on the previous day was sickeningly perfect, but we all knew that the decision to rest was the right one because we all felt strong. The day began in a trial by fire, or cold, I should say. By now, we were all used to the wind, freezing fingers and toes, belabored breathing, frozen beards, aching muscles, blisters, and a myriad 
of other maladies that a mountain can dish out, but today they took a little bit more of a pronounced toll. We crossed the Autobahn, named so because of the speed at which inexperienced cl European climbers fall down the face of the mountain. Then we made a steep uphill ascent towards the two semi-flat spots on the climb, the polo field and the football field. Okay, we're about 18,500, maybe 19,000 feet. We made it up the Autobahn, and then the steep hill here. We're coming up. The views are getting more and more amazing by the second. It's just incredible here. There's about 30 or so people making their way up today. Despite how I sound, I'm feeling strong. It's about two breaths to one step. A steady and slow pace. That's kind of fun on these mountains up here. This is the football field we're coming to right up here. I started kind of cheering up a little bit. How beautiful it is up here. And what an amazing place it is. The highest temperature we'd see this day was 0 degrees Fahrenheit. If that previous clip seemed to end abruptly, it's because my camera froze from exposure and stopped the footage automatically. After a little internal mini freak out that I wouldn't have any summit pictures, I realized I could just put it in a jacket to thaw it out. Pictures or not, by the time we reached the football field, I was confident that we'd reached the summit. So much so that I was literally dancing on our brakes. I could see the summit and it didn't seem far away. One of our guides suddenly started having altitude issues. I was kind of disappointed with their decision to continue his climbing. It made for very slow going and potentially dangerous remainder of the day. It serves as one of the many reasons why I'll, ne I'll never climb guided again. The summit ridge of Denali is one of the most exposed and magnificent places on earth. I slid my face mask down to start taking another video. Something was very wrong. I couldn't actually feel my face mask slide down. I put my glove up to my face. I couldn't feel my entire nose. There was flesh there, but it had no sensation. I put my face back, back on, face mask back on, and tried to warm my nose with my breath. <sighs> At 20,000 feet, this is simply hyperventilating a climber. I started wondering if I'd have to get my nose chopped off. I'm imagining taking kids I don't even have to school, and their friends making fun of their dad with a chopped off pig's nose. Well, in the midst of all the fretting, I reached the summit. So this is it. This is the 16th day. Working so hard for it. So over a year I've been planning, raising money, figuring this out. I just crossed the ridge line. It's absolutely gorgeous. All these people are coming down. Yeah, yeah! Yo, brother! All right! Yo, North America! Congratulations! How are you too, man? We'll see you in Tokyo. The summit is right there. All these people just made it up. They're feeling good and strong. I just take one step after the other and that's all it takes. No matter how many times the beard froze over or how many times my fingers got cold. No matter how hard you're breathing, just put one foot in front of the other. That's all it takes. Woo! How you guys doing? We got Cowboy up here. Yeah. We're on top of North America. That's what she said. We've been working at this moment for so long. Mm -hmm. Let's up here. We have a few more steps to go. We did some summit. The Nali. The summit of North America. The one thing I've learned in culture. Even I feel like you can't go. Every person can tell me whether I can or can't make it up to so me. That's it. Doesn't matter how much you hurt. You can make it. 
I don't know if we can hear a camera what he's saying, but it's a congratulations. Here it is. The summit of North America, top of the world Denali. All right. At places as extreme as these, the time for celebration is short. A guide and a client in our party had acute mountain sickness, and my nose was frostbitten. When I told our healthy guide about my nose, he told me, quote, I don't have time to deal with that, making for a bittersweet summit experience and making me wonder if he had altitude sickness as well. I insisted, and he shoved a pocket warmer into my face mask. Within just a few short moments, a storm approached, and we descended through the cloud. Visibility was limited to just a few feet. All issues ended up fine, but the myriad of problems could have easily spelled disaster, as I've seen happen on many other mountains, and it once again underscored the importance of sound and right-minded leadership. We returned to the 17,000-foot camp, took a few hours rest, and then descended all the way from 17,000 feet back to the airstrip in one solid push. Another decision I was not happy with. All right, it's day 17 and day 18. And yesterday we summited, which was awesome. That is the mountain that we summited off there in the distance. And the reason it's so far off in the distance is because since 1 p.m. yesterday, we've been uh, marching, death marching, back to the airstrip so we can catch an airplane. Uh, it's now about... 4.30 or 5 a.m. I'm very dehydrated, exhausted, and uh, finding all of this a little bit unnecessary. But nevertheless, that's what we're doing. So, the stoke that we summited has been awesome. See this beautiful, beautiful place. The moon's out. The mountains are all lit up by the either morning sun or <laughs> sunset really hard to tell which is which out here. It seems been awesome. It's been a really cool group of people despite being um, pretty emotionally and physically done for. I'm stoked to have uh, been a part of this amazing experience and I'm grateful for everybody who has taken the time to watch these videos. See ya. I never drink this. That's too high class Ooh. stuff for China. Where's your video camera? Well, that bird your son in this right here. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Chin chin. Mm. Oh, that's such a like, man, that's like apple juice for me. Alright. Bottles up, cowboy. Uh -huh. yeah. Nice. Wanted to touch the lips, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. We need to see. Good stuff. I don't mind if I do. Show us how it's done. Oh, oh, holy oh. cow. He might let us go. He's not here. We got half He's a fifth right of now. Canadian black velvet whiskey we're, left. We're, we're on the video camera. Let's do it. Shake and bake. <laughs> Come on. Can't handle it, can you? Oh. Come on. Ooh. Come on. No, no, no. Oh, touche. <laughs> All right, oh. John. There you go. Woo. Pull the shit off. Actually, oh well. Yeah. Mr. Hunter. Yeah. The Canadian. The Canadian, of course, finishes his own brand. Ooh, I need to sit down now. <laughs> well done. Do you have a, you have a movie? <laughs> yeah, boo. 
Hey, I, I don't know. I can't handle any more how.